In December 2023, South Africa presented its case to the ICJ, the International Court of Justice, the world's highest court, the court of the UN. Um, and that court de declared uh, the, that that case was a plausible case that Israel was making a, uh, that that Israel was carrying out a genocide in the Gaza Strip, and so and and so over the coming years, we will get a legal um, we will get a legal a court a, a determination on that question. So let's just put that out there right now that like none of us are legal experts, none of us are judges on the um, ICJ court. Um, and so um, ultimately, it will be the legal experts to make this call. But I think it is worth at least, uh, um, you know, uh, talking about the Genocide Convention of 48 and whether or not, uh, in our view, um, Israel is carrying out uh, genocidal acts according to, to that convention. So let me just briefly cite the convention itself, just so we're not debating what a genocide is. Um, Article 2 of the Genocide Convention states, and now I'm quoting, um, um, any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or part a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group, such as one, killing members of the group, two, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, three, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, four, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group, five, uh, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. So the, the, the two key pieces here are number one, intent, and number two, carrying out a number of these acts, these genocidal acts. And so let's start with intent. There's four pages dedicated to the genocid genocidal statements made by Israeli political and military leaders. I'm sure many people in this audience are familiar with them. It's worth citing just a couple of them, uh, just to refresh our memories, but th these should all be quite familiar uh, with to all of you. Already on October 9th, um, Israeli Defense Minister of Galan said, "No, um, you know, we're, we're, we're cutting off Gaza completely. No food, no fuel, no electricity, um, uh, uh, no medicine, no water. Now, if you declare your intent to cut off water to, to 2.3 million people, that is literally the definition when uh, of intent to destroy an entire group because you cannot go more than 72 hours without water. So when you say we are going to prevent you from having any access to water or food, you're declaring your intent to commit genocide. That happened on October 9th. He also on October 9th told his uh, soldiers, I'm removing all restraints. Um, uh, uh, Bibi Netanyahu, Israeli prime minister, uh, declared not once but twice. Um, he, he likened uh, uh, the people of Gaza to, uh, excuse me, he likened Israel's enemies to Amalek, Amalek being the biblical, the enemies of the biblical Israelites, the people the biblical Israelites were instructed to carry out a genocide against. They were instructed to kill every man, woman, child, and ox um, and goat uh, belonging to the Amalek people. So that was the prime minister, the defense minister, obviously Isaac Herzog's famous statement, um, there's no innocence in Gaza. And, and there are not dozens, not hundreds, but literally thousands of other statements made by very senior Israeli political and military leaders um, calling for the complete annihilation of Gaza, um, calling for uh, um, basically saying all of the Palestinians in Gaza are, are responsible for the attacks carried in, uh, out on October 7th because they either supported them or they voted for Hamas or they passed out candy on October 7th. Right? So these were uh, all these statements were made to basically liken everyone, uh, four-year-old kids, 85-year-old grandmothers, everyone in Gaza is responsible. And thus, those are all also genocidal uh, uh, statements. So there's, there's no real debate here. In fact, this is, I think, one of the things that has been pointed out already in the very early days after October 7th by genocide experts as saying this is almost unprecedented in human history. Very rarely, if ever, ha ha do we have this number of statements, this many genocidal remarks from the very top of the echelons of political and military power in Israel. So that, that's the first part of the, uh, uh, um, of the um, of the uh, of the case, right? It's that there's intent. And by the way, if you look at the um, um, Aharon Barak, the Israeli judge appointed to the ICJ hearing, he actually voted in favor of the, uh, um, you know, the, the, there were multiple votes, um, you know, they were voting on whether or not this case should proceed. And basically, Aharon Barak said yes. Um, he, he did not oppose Israel's actions in Gaza. He said Israel's actions were not genocidal. But he did say Israel's statements were genocidal. You have even Israeli judges who have served on the Israeli Supreme Court for decades basically admitting that these are genocidal statements. Now let's move to the genocidal acts. So we, we already mentioned the five of them, killing members of the group. The estimates are uh, to date something like uh, 42,000 Palestinians have been uh, confirmed killed in Gaza, uh, 17,000 children. 
the vast majority of those 42,000 are obviously uh, civilians. Um, and of course, the, the estimates are, all, are obviously, uh, those are obviously gross underestimates, right? Because we know that uh, something like 10,000, probably much more than that, people are unaccounted for. They're buried under the rubble. Their corpses are, have probably already um, uh, uh, just turned to, uh, uh, to turn to bones by this point. Um, uh, so uh, you had the Lancet estimate that put the number of deaths likely to be at about 180,000. I've seen other estimates that place the number of de uh, dead already above 200,000. So we're talking about some estimates, some very credible estimates, are now placing the number of Palestinians already killed in Gaza at over 200,000, which is one-tenth of the population of Gaza. Um, then let's go to number two, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the groups. I believe the estimate on the number of injured is over 100,000. Um, more than a million Palestinians in Gaza currently have infectious diseases, currently are suffering from diarrhea. Um, uh, um, number three, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or part. And this is actually where I think the ICJ case uh, present makes the most compelling case, which is to say that um, beginning uh, for, for about three and a half weeks after October 7th, Israel completely shut off uh, all the borders. No trucks went in for about three and a half weeks. Um, and then since then, the estimates have varied, but something like 60 to 70 trucks are, have been allowed to enter uh, Gaza per day over the past 11 and a half months. Um, and so if you, if, you, if you consider that on, on the eve of October 7th, so on October 6th, you were averaging about 500 trucks per day. And, that, and those 500 trucks, by the way, that was... Uh, why 500 and not 1,000 or 2,000? Because 500 was the number of trucks that was needed to prevent starvation, right? Because it, it, it was the 2007 policy of the Israeli government, and, and every uh, government since has, has um, pursued, continued that policy, which was um, put Palestinians on a, on a diet. Those were the words of uh, um, Ehud Olmert's uh, uh, advisor at the time, Dov, uh, what's his name? Weitzman, I believe. Um, and, and anyways, he, so he said, Put Palestinians on a diet. Um, so they calculated the number of calories every uh, adult male needed, every child needed, every adult woman needed, and they let that many calories into Gaza. And that was 500 trucks per day. As I said, we've had about 60 trucks per day since, which means something like you know 85% reduction uh, from a, a period of time in which that was the bare minimum needed. So basically 80% of people in, in Gaza do not have uh, uh, enough food to eat. You're talking about an entire population made to starve to death. And this has been confirmed by every single human rights organization that has been allowed to enter Gaza since October 7th. Uh, UNRWA, the World Health Organization, UNICEF, uh, OCHA, they've all said the exact same thing. There's no debate here. Zero people disagree. Zero people who have been allowed into Gaza dispute this. There are literally thousands of trucks waiting on the border in Sinai. Who are, those trucks not, are not being allowed in. Why? Well, there's always excuses presented. Israel is fantastic at presenting amazing excuses for why they're not, they're not going to allow food and water and medicine and necessary supplies into Gaza. But the reality is they are intentionally starving millions of Palestinians to death, which is obviously uh, uh, um, confirms that number C, the, the third uh, a genocidal act deliberately inflicting upon the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction, is, is, is not really up for debate by any of this, the people involved in this. Then you have the complete destruction of Gaza's uh, health infrastructure. All 37 hospitals in Gaza have been either partially or completely destroyed. And these aren't like, you know, incidental um, uh, uh, attacks. These are deliberately targeted attacks to completely eliminate the health infrastructure in Gaza. They've killed hundreds of health workers. They've deliberately targeted 15 aid trucks, aid convoys, have been deliberately targeted. These are convoys that, that, that had provided the Israeli military their coordinates and their locations and got approval from the IDF to deliver that aid, um, and yet they were nevertheless targeted. The most famous, of course, which was the World Food Kitchen back in April that was targeted uh, but there have been uh, 15 additional such incidences. So what, what, um, what we are talking about, we're, of course, the complete destruction of the entire housing stock. We're talking 85% of buildings in Gaza have been either partially or completely destroyed. Something like 75 to 85% 85, 85 of schools have been targeted, um, either partially or completely destroyed. We are talking about the complete eradication of an entire society. Um, I, I don't really think it's, it, you know, um, I mean, people would criticize me for even coming onto a debate where we're gonna debate whether or not this is a genocide. I, I think the majority of serious international legal experts, including people like Francesca Albanese, the UN's special repertoire on the occupied Palestinian territories, has said Israel is carrying out genocidal acts. Um, I don't really think it's actually up for debate, but um, maybe I'll pause there and, and, and Zach, you can, you can um, uh, uh, come in and, and, and tell me where I've gotten things wrong. 